All right, well, thank you so much for coming out this evening. We have uh, gathered kind of a motley crew for you. Um, it it spanned some of you I, I should not be harsh with, some of you I can be harsh with later on. Uh, but it spans the gamut of all the decades going back from, from the 40s. What, what happened to the 50s? Nobody from the 50s wanted to come out? No, she couldn't. She had to cancel at the last minute. All right. Well, we have, we have most of the decades uh, covered uh, all the way through to the modern era. Uh, some of the stories that you're going to hear tonight <coughs> will show a, a little bit of the how things have changed, what, what is different, but still, again, what is, what is the same. <laughs> Gross Hill High School, for all of you Red Devils, it is... Uh, it's a special place, but the hallways might be a little bit different. We might be wearing different clothing, uh, but uh, we're all still on the, in the same business, which is the, the very important business of education, even though some of you kind of spent your time in the hallways doing things not around education. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to go and, and go around and do is uh, I'm going to allow the, the panel an opportunity to introduce themselves their year of graduation is there. If they forget, they can read it off. <laughs> and I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves, and they're going to start off with uh, telling a short story. Short story. Okay. I'm going to give you three to five minutes. <laughs> short story. On your most exciting memory while at the high school. Think about it for a moment. If you can't think about the most exciting thing, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you cheat, <laughs> and you can also share with us your most embarrassing memory of life at the high school. So you choose, either the most exciting or the most embarrassing. Let's start off with you. Introduce yourself. My name is Dale Aviol, and as the sign says, I'm a 1963 graduate of uh, Groziel High School. And uh, you want me to launch right into the most exciting Thing that was tell us about life in high school well well you know in those days uh, they of course we were we had the old high school on East River which has since been torn down and we actually took classes in the 1911 building which has since been torn down and uh, if you'll recall though neither of those buildings had air conditioning or any of the uh, luxuries that exist now so when it got hot, you just grinned and bared it, basically. Open the window. And yeah, that was it. Open the window, and then things uh, got kind of interesting uh, in relation to the windows being open. I can remember that uh, the uh, senior class, when I was a freshman, and that included the Max Gale group, uh, which was uh, quite uh, an interesting group and, and very... Uh, disruptive let's say the windows had to be open that day and they decided that they were going to have a graduation ski party so they skipped school went out in the river and they were out in the river uh, skiing and uh, surfboarding and everything in front of the school and Yay, well, you know all sorts of noise and disruption and of course the teachers <coughs> are trying to conduct the classes and all this is going on outside and we're rubbernecking, looking at all this uh, activity going on in the river, wishing that we were out there. So that is one uh, memory of, uh, of lack of air conditioning and how it can contribute to memories. <laughs> uh, sort of a senior skip day, or did you have an organized senior skip day? Uh, well, we didn't. Now, that was their <clears throat> class. So okay. I wasn't in that class. But uh, uh, I remember our class decided that uh, some of the members of our class, there were two things that I can remember that were rather humorous, uh, innocent Shoot. humorous, but they were, they were <laughs> there was a, an old buggy that someone procured and uh, they decided that they wanted to disassemble this old buggy and reassemble it on top of the cafeteria building, which is what they did. So the maintenance man came Why? in in the morning Sounded like a good idea. I mean, it just <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other was that uh, Mrs. Sawitsky, Mildred Sawitsky, yes. had a well-known uh, rock collection that lined her driveway. 
and uh, she had collected these rocks in her travels throughout the United States and brought them home. And uh, there were certain individuals that decided it might be a good idea to take these rocks and relocate them in the driveway of the valedictorian's house. Oh, so. <laughs> did, did you blame the valedictorian? <coughs> Absolutely. <Okay. laughs> all right, well, that was four stories, but you went a little bit over your timeline, but that, that's all right. We'll come back. You brought up some, some good things we'll come back to. Next on the, uh, the panel. Uh, my name is Charlie Butler, class of 78. Uh, I am currently a teacher at the high school. I am also a golf coach and a basketball coach. And I think the most exciting, uh, my most exciting event at the high school was when I was 40, let me, let me see, 46, so 44. So I don't remember <coughs> breakfast, so going back that far has kind of hurt me, but uh, I was, uh, I had been an attorney, I was a practicing attorney, and I had decided that I was going to do something else, and I walked into the high school, and I was uh, trying to figure out if I was going to uh, uh, go into teaching, and <coughs> I walked into the library, which was then a library, not a media center, we actually had mm -hmm. books and stuff to read, and there... Lo and behold, sat Denny Guess, who had been my seventh grade social studies teacher, and very close. We had we gotten very close when uh, he was the yearbook advisor, and I had mentioned to him that it was I was surprised he looked just like Denny had back in I don't know seventy five or seventy six when I first met him, and I asked him uh, about teaching, and and he sat me down and gave me an earful and as I was getting up to him he says and make sure that you do your student teaching with me and I know that you're not allowed to pick where you go to do your student teaching they don't want you to do your student teaching where you've graduated from high school although having been 25 years ago I don't think it really mattered all that much uh, but having said that I did I did my student teaching and because of that I ended up with a long-term subbing gig when Denny got sick and then got a long, the two year long term subbing gig when someone went on maternity leave and now I, like I said, I'm a high school history teacher and I coach golf and basketball at the high school. So it doesn't get any better than that. So, good. For sure. I was kind of hoping for stories of the 70s. I think, that, I think that there might be a couple in there. You forgot. You're looking at my sign. Oh no, I, I didn't forget. Bill, go right ahead. You said embarrassing. I said you can do embarrassing if you'd like, Bill. What was the other? Most exciting. <coughs> well, it's sort of a combination. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember, I, I'm losing my hearing. I can't hear very well. So if, if, I, uh, if you give me a reply and I ask you to repeat it, uh, I was a sophomore. Uh, I was in... Uh, probably biology class. Well, I was a freshman. What was next? Uh, chemistry. Chemistry class. Because I can remember the the, uh, the steps going up, the, you know, the, the uh, work area and everything. And uh, it was last hour. No, it wasn't. Excuse me. Excuse me. I get to mix up with another story. It was morning uh, before lunch, and uh, last hour before lunch, and uh, we had sort of a con. There was only twenty five people in my class, twenty five people in just about every class. So we had a hundred people in the high school. So we all knew each other pretty doggone well. And uh, a couple of the seniors came in and sat down. And we started talking. And uh, how would you like to skip school? I don't know, I never skipped school in my life. I remember, I was a sophomore. And uh, wh where are we going? We're going downtown, Detroit. And we had Greyhound bus service on Crozeal at this time. We uh, bus went around the island every couple hours or so, and then 
took us to Wyandotte, and then got on another bus that went downtown to the family theater. Well, okay, <laughs> you're seniors, you know. <coughs> I, I sort of, sort of, you know, respected that. Okay, we're on the bus. We're talking. Where are we going? We're going to the Avenue Brilesh Theater. <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> Never been in a burlesque theater in my life, and I think you had to be 18. I'm not sure. It might have been 21. But anyways, we all got in and saw the show. You know, all the bumps and the grinds and you know, all that stuff. It was quite, a, quite an introduction for a, a sophomore. And uh, took the bumps back home. <laughs> Next day, you go to school. You skipped school yesterday. Down to the office. Down to the office. Here's Connie Culver, Mary Osterberry, Ward, uh, Connie Overish, really, uh, later married Ward Culver. He was there, and Bud Sproul. Bud Sproul became our uh, our township uh, treasurer at one time. Where did she go? <laughs> the Avenue Theater. Oh, God. They couldn't help but laugh. Um, guy by the name of Baldwin. Don Baldwin was was uh, superintendent principal at that time. <laughs> he had a hell of a time <laughs> keeping a smile back. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, it was after school for only one week. It wasn't bad at all. <laughs> so that, that was sort well of embarrassing. It. Okay. I, I've got more, and I want to I want to tell you about growing up, uh, maturing early in in those years. You want to tell them now, or do you want us to come back to it? Now let's come back to it. This, awesome. is, this is pretty serious, this other one. It's not funny. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Mather. Uh, Gray Mather and gra graduated with Bill somehow. We got through high school together in 1946. <laughs> and uh, when I, uh, one, of the, one of the memories I have that for some reason stands out in my mind was uh, I was a freshman and uh, I went to uh, study study hall, which was in the library at the time. And it was one of these nice spring days where the heat was coming in and they opened the windows, cool it off in there. So everybody was in there and studying and working real hard. And then uh, the, the teacher came in. I can't remember her name, but anyway, she came in and she said, looked around the room and looked at everybody. And she said, uh, where's Mr. Krebs, Heine Krebs? And everybody said, uh, well, we don't know. He's not around here. So somebody had their nose down in their book. I can't remember who that was. They started snickering. And <laughs> so then the teacher looked and said, what are you laughing about? She went all around the room and had a question everybody, uh, where is Heine Krebs? <laughs> well, nobody would come up with the answer. And then all of a sudden, we heard a little call. And we hear, uh, help! <laughs> and uh, we said, what was she, teachers? What was that? Uh, it might have been uh, Mr. Krebs. <laughs> 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 well, where is he? Oh, over there. She walks over to the window and Heine is hanging out. <laughs> and he's, Heine's hanging. This is the second story up. He's hanging on for dear life with his hands up on this uh, on the windowsill. And she looks down. He's pretty red faced. And she said, uh, "Hey, you guys, come here and help." So we had to go over and pull poor Heine through the window. <laughs> Heine was quite a character. He kind of brushes himself off. Mr. Krebs, why did you do that? I said, well, it was spring, you know, and I just couldn't stand to be in class. She said, well, why didn't you use the stairway? I said, well, I thought this would be faster. <laughs> so she said, well, if you're fast on your feet, 
Let me see how fast you can go down and see Mr. Baldwin, the superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> and, and poor Heine, he never did come back to class. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the poor guy, but that was the end of him. <laughs> and our last panel, please be nice to her. She's a, she's a new graduate within the last few years. If you would, introduce yourself and uh, again, Tell us about the most exciting thing from your high school memories. Um, my name is Amy Smazic. I graduated in 2006 from Crowsdale High School. Um, I actually had this guy as one of my substitute teachers in Spanish class. His Spanish is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> but he was there for the Thanks. history, right? Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> um, you turned out okay anyway, okay? You know, just didn't hurt. Well rounded. Um, I currently teach preschool at U of M Dearborn. Um, I actually did my student teaching in second grade at Park Lane Elementary School uh, last year. Um, and as far as my most exciting event in high school goes, was actually not in the high school, but my junior year, I believe, of high school, um, the jazz band went to perform at the seventh inning stretch at a Tigers game in Cleveland. So we all got on the bus, went to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and got to play at the Seventh Day Stretch to rave reviews. Um, and most of my memories involve being a part of the theater program and being a part of the music program at the high school, well before there was a media center. Um, the first thing that I actually voted on was the bond to improve the high school so that all the renovations that have taken place could happen. I remember um, being so excited to hurry up and register to vote um, for that reason. All right. Well, you've brought up an awful lot of things. Uh, I've, I've heard some, from some stories that are going to be coming up, but we're not going to get to the serious ones yet. Uh, it's the springtime. And as we know, springtime <clears throat> brings many things in high schools. It, it has this little thing that is a tradition called prom. Do you remember prom? Oh, yeah. All right. One of the things that I was kind of curious about, if there's only 25 people in your class, <laughs> is, is competition pretty hard for <laughs> day for prom? It goes deeper than that. Okay, right. <laughs> Tell us your, um, your memory of prom. What was it like? Where'd you have it? We had our proms uh, at the Gross Hill Golf and Country Club, live band. Decorations were fantastic in that that domed uh, uh, dance floor, pavilion or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I got to get into the serious part. Well, if you'd like to. Uh, we grew up fast. <laughs> and this is a, uh, what you might call a yearbook for the class of 45. That's all we had, because there was a war going on. Okay? Okay, the honor roll for a class of 45. Here's a picture of them. And they're all girls. <laughs> no, if, you, if you've ever if you've ever looked at if you've gone to the high school if you look at the class of uh, you know I'll tell you what uh, members of this class but are now in service on up to our country the following uh, left for armed forces during the senior year. Okay, Kit Culver, Walter Erdman, Robert Gilbert, George Krebs. That's what happened to Heine. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie LaFleur, Ernie LaForest, <clears throat> George LaBaugh, Bob Van Bremer. Following boys were members of our class at some time. Kenneth Ayotte, U.S. Marines, Paul Breen, Navy, Richard Brown, Marine, John Devendorf, Army, William Fawcett, Army, William McCoy, Navy, Lloyd Miller, Navy. Kelvin Weingarten Army. The girls were very plentiful. 
Uh, I was class of 46, and we didn't get hit so hard. My girlfriend was class of 45, and I, I used to kid. I said, you wouldn't be going out with me, a, a younger guy, if all these guys weren't around. But she happened to be my next door neighbor, too. But we had some beautiful parties mm -hmm. uh, for senior class. We had some beautiful parties after ball games, football games, basketball games, live band mm -hmm. after, after a football game in uh, the 1911 building. We tried like the devil not to get the school board to tar tear down the 1911 building because of all those memories. Mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was basketball court as well as dance floor, and it was a ball. We grew up fast. <laughs> All the men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boys became men. Yes. <laughs> I went in during Korea, <coughs> so I just missed it. All right, coming back to uh, how many members of, um, I, 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 it's a question, how many members of the class were lost? Pardon? How many members of the class were lost during the Second World War? How many, how many didn't make it back? Uh, Corky Brown didn't make it back. Um, let's see. There's none in this list. The All full list made it Richard back. Brown. Richard Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was miraculous. That they, this is like you'll you'll find some uh, in the class of '44 that didn't make it back, or 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 uh, '43. Well, there's quite a few. Hmm? Quite a few, but I can't remember. Yeah, them. I can't remember. Names, yeah. <coughs> if, if I had. Uh, we we've got the information in the in, the in our room in here. Okay. What was the minimum age that a man? Eighteen. So, so these guys turned eighteen uh, uh, midway through their senior year, or uh, a couple of men enlisted and lied about their age because they had another over older brother that that uh, got killed or was in. Uh, Bob Green didn't make it back. Bill Green. Uh, was in my class or, or class of 45, I don't remember. And uh, he, did, he uh, joined uh, uh, because of his brother getting killed in the South Pacific. So there was that kind of thing going on. You know. But uh, uh, it's quite a story that, that uh, uh, Winifred Campbell, or, yeah, Winifred Campbell uh, uh, kept track of of everything from the Civil War on up through, I don't know if she did Korea or not, but she did through World War II, and we've got that in the in the uh, archives also. Okay. All right, back to happier times. Back to the prom. <coughs> Let's see. What was prom like in the 60s? Well, it was uh, very formal, uh, as I, I think the tradition continues, but the... Uh, one of the biggest things, of course, was to procure a proper corsage. And I was very fortunate in that regard in that I knew a lady that worked for one of the largest florist uh, shops in the Detroit area. And she, I would always call her directly and she would always say, okay, I'll make something special, which she always did. And uh, I think uh, the girls that I took to prom will probably not remember me, but they will remember the corsage. <laughs> <laughs> Where did they have the, a, was there a, a meal and a dance? And uh, well, no, there was no, no meal. It was, it was held in the gymnasium at that time. And uh, of course they had a, a nice uh, band or music, and, uh, but uh, no, there was no meal. How many people in your graduating class? Well, we were the last class to graduate under 100. <coughs> so uh, we had 96. All right. How was that different from just 15 years later in 78? Uh, we didn't have a prom. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, good. I was going to say that, and I see no Tammy prom. back there saying, no. oh, you don't remember anything. There's, there's, there's like five or ten years in there where they didn't do prom. We had homecoming, and we had the all-night party. And that was it. Uh, all and party. senior Trip, but yes, y'all night party after, uh, right after the graduation ceremony, we all went over to the country club and stayed there until the dawn's early light. Uh, and so it was, it was, homecoming was so uh, wound up with 
all of Homecoming Week and the things that were going on with Homecoming. Uh, I see it to be a very, very different thing than what, for instance, what prom is now and what I've seen in your descriptions of proms in the past. Uh, you had, you, you did go out to dinner and the dance, it was formal and what guy doesn't want to see his girlfriend dressed in an evening gown and the corsage. Try to get the boutonniere pinned on without drawing blood and <laughs> all those other good things happen. Uh, but it was all part of also having just spent three late nights trying to get the float done before and uh, the football team trying to win one at homecoming and then cleaning up and it was... Uh, I don't think it, uh, I don't think we got the excitement that you get with prom uh, because it was not all by itself and special that way. Did you wear a tuxedo? Uh, it was the 70s, it could have been a purple tuxedo. No, as a matter of fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, bell bottom. Homecoming, yeah, right. I do believe I wore a bow tie one year. Uh, I think you wore a blue suit one year. Too, a, right? Yes, a blue suit. Uh, Ruffles. One year I had, no, I, I, I'm, Sears Scepter was yes. not quite that time. Yes, he did have hair when I was asked. Gray <laughs> <laughs> matter. We didn't even call it a prom. We didn't even have the, uh, what, what are those monkey things who you build? A, a, Floats. Floats. The floats. <laughs> yeah. no. All right, did anybody have a prom in the spring? What you say? Okay, spring prom. I think mine never was the first. Heard of it. I never heard one. Never used really? the word prom in, in school. We had, yeah, we had a couple of them. I can't. I we had we had one, Pat. Well, we I you, did you call it a prom? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. <coughs> did you really well, call it a dance? Maybe a dance back then, but it was the same idea. Oh. But didn't didn't we have so, didn't we have something in in the fall in in January February or something? Oh, All right, all right, losing, losing control of the panel. These were senior proms. The juniors All right. prom for the seniors, graduating seniors when I was in school. Yeah. So we have school dances, proms, everything from homecoming to to the spring. I do remember, well, I don't remember if we call it a prom or a dance or whatever. But it was a big deal in those days. And uh, so anyway, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we had, uh, Mrs. Sawitsky was in charge of those <laughs> at, that, at that time. So she said, I want all you uh, children to come down into the gym. Yes, ma'am. So okay, we all go into the gym. She said, line up. So I want the shortest guys in the front, the shortest girls in the front. And as you get taller, you go back. The tall ones in the back. So I said, uh, well, what's this all about? Well, we're going to choose partners for the dance. I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Anyhow, I, I was not too tall in those days. So I was up in the front pretty much. So anyway, I'm looking around. I said, oh, my God, who is this over here? <laughs> anyway, Bill will get a kick out of this one here. So she said, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, you're all going to be partners for the dance. Okay, fine. So uh, I said, who's it going to be? Look, it was uh, Judy Johnson, who was still alive. Yeah. You remember Judy? Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> She's still alive. That's what I said. <laughs> so anyway, I, I said, okay, now that's fine. Now she's now I'm going to tell you boys what you have to do. Uh, yes, Mrs. Sawitsky. She says, you guys are going to have to wear suits. Suit? What's that? Well, you, your mother will tell you. Okay. <laughs> she said, you're also going to have to get your, your girlfriend or your girl, whoever you're going to the dance with, corsage. I said, uh, Mrs. Sawitsky, what, what is a corsage? She said, it's a flower. You go to the, you go to the floral shop. Go to the Trenton Flower Shop and you get a, they'll give you a corsage. Okay, I said, no. is, is that going to be expensive? Things were a little tough back in those days during the war. There wasn't much money around. So anyhow, she says, uh, 
your mother can afford it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so, so, so anyway, we hooked up for the big day of the dance, and uh, I took Judy to the dance, and we had a, you know, it was in the gym, and I think we had some records playing or something, no band or anything. Yeah. And then we had some music going, and well, it was a nice dance. And uh, so it's funny, after that, I started dating Judy for quite <laughs> For two or three years in a row, I, we went around together. <laughs> so that, a little love affair started there. So <laughs> anyway, that was my remembrance of the the uh, proms or whatever you call them in those days, dances maybe. All right, bring us up to the to the modern day. <clears throat> did not have partners like you no, did. Not, <laughs> not quite the same. Um, we did pictures um, over by the water. And my senior prom was at the Hyatt Regency in Dearborn. Oh. And um, it sounds like it would be lovely. Um, we were, I was going to go with a group of friends um, on, on a limo. Um, but the limo unfortunately went to that other gross town, the gross huh. point, instead of the gross eel. <laughs> so they waited around for a long time. Um, <laughs> and I drove myself. And as it turns out, um, Hillary Clinton was speaking in the other ballroom, so the valley was full. Um, but several of the group tried to sneak over and hear her speak. Um, we did not have a live band. We had a, a disc jockey <coughs> play music. Um, and I remember that it was a beautiful event, but that it was raining and cold. So it was a long walk out to the car, but um, that limo sure would have come in handy. <laughs> was uh, was the dancing portion was it at the high school or it was all at it was dinner and dancing at um, all off site mm -hmm. oh, all, all right. off site I, no you said the this when was when I unfortunately I don't know was that the your teacher that partnered you up or this her Mr. teacher Milton? yeah okay Miss she was uh, she was our okay teacher. she taught three or four subjects now when you went to the dance did you invite your own. They, oh yeah. Okay, and in, in oh, yes, I, he must be talking about freshmen or something like okay. that. Freshmen. I'm talking about juniors. They're senior, scared. Freshmen junior prom, scared. senior prom. Uh, uh, I can't remember what else, but we were always dancing. Mm -hmm. well, and the reason I bring it up is one of the things I notice now. And we were always singing too. <laughs> I don't remember a lot of singing, but uh, a lot of. Uh, at least since I've been back, and I have two girls who graduated from Roseville High School, and I've got another one there still, and there's not as much inviting. Uh, if I didn't friends. have a date, I wouldn't go. And now that packs of girls go and these fine packs of guys there at the dance, and, it, and I, packs maybe isn't fair, but it sort of seems that's what it looks like. <laughs> but that seems to be a thing that has quite changed. And, and I only I bring this up because I went to a, a homecoming hour sort of prom once with a girl. And <clears throat> fortunately, she went home with some other guy. And so I'm, I'm <laughs> sort of trying to see this movement, of the social movement of how things are a little bit different. I, I think I would have not as felt that if I was in, in your time, Amy, when i just gone with a bunch of guys and you know, danced with some girls there. And the, the after... Uh the after game dances, uh, the girls and the boys sometimes went separately and mm -hmm. meet up there and, and dance. And, and uh, then the next time you had a date because you like somebody. <laughs> We're a good dancer. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about somebody who's not here. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about a memory of a person in high school. I want to know. Give me a story about one of your best friends in high school. Tell me the person. Tell me what they were like, what they did, and things you did together inside the school. Let's start off, uh, let's start off in with you, Dale. Charlie needs to be nice. Gee. Well, we had, we actually had, you know, four or five people that, that oh, don't tell all that stayed anymore. together regularly, you know, one of whom was uh, Jody Rogers, and uh, <laughs> uh, we had uh, Al Mason, another one of our classmates, and uh, uh, Dale Humphrey. Uh, I, I can 
you know, as I say, we had, you know, a, a group that generally went places together, Ian Holmes. And uh, it was interesting uh, in that uh, we were always discovering new things. And I do remember the day that Ian Holmes approached me and said, look, there's this new restaurant that opened up on Eureka Road. It's a hamburger place. And you can go in there and get a hamburger and be in and out with your hamburger and your complete order within two minutes. And I said, oh, come on. You know. And it only cost 10 cents yeah. you know, for the hamburger. And I, of course, it was McDonald's. But you know, and I said, I don't believe it. And they said, well, well, you know, come on, we'll go over there. And he had his driver's license, and I didn't. So away we went. And, and of course, it became a regular hangout. And uh, the... Uh, there were things that developed, you know, people, kids would drive through with very nice cars, and of course we weren't driving particularly nice cars, and the typical quip to someone that was driving through with a nice car, and of course he would have his girlfriend with him and say, we would shout out the window, hey, that's a nice car your dad's got there. <laughs> <laughs> Those sorts of things. <laughs> All right, great. Tell well, me. I've got, uh, when I think back on some of my friends in um, in high school, I had this one friend by the name of Dick Kramer who was he was a very good friend of mine, and we we did a lot of things together. And uh, one night he called me up and he said, uh, "We have to take my dad over to a meeting uh, over at Lou Liggett's in Trenton, over at the boatyard." He said, uh, you want to come along? I said, sure. He said, oh, okay, I'll come down and uh, pick you up. And we'll, we'll take my dad over to the meeting. This is during the war. So, okay, so we go, we get over to Liggett's, and, uh, and uh, inside there is a man by the name of Earl Roberts who was making parts for the, uh, for airplane parts and uh, for the war effort. So he was in Lou Liggett's in the boat yard. He had a set up of machinery around him, almost about half as big as this room. Screw machines. He's, yeah, and he's in the middle of it. We, we walk in with Mr. Kramer, and uh, they had some kind of a big meeting over there. They're probably going to play cards. So anyway, we <laughs> walked in, and, he's, and they said, you know Mr. Roberts? I said, yes, yeah, he's a friend of my mother. So I, he said, oh, hi, Greg. He's back there. He said, this guy is making parts that nobody could make. He was a, a really a mechanical genius. And he's turning out these tiny little fine parts that are necessary for the war effort. He had a couple guards in there. Most of the time, from what I understand, with guns guarding this guy. That's how important it was to get these parts over to Willow Run. So anyhow, this was my introduction to, to Dick Kramer's dad. So we, he walks in the building, he's, and uh, Dick says to his dad, he said, Dad, you, did you remember your gun? Oh, yeah, I got my gun right here, Daddy. He's got his gun, and, uh, and they walk in. Like, this is a big mafia meeting or something. So we leave him, and uh, he'll be back here at 9 o'clock. Pick me up, Dick. Yes, sir. So we got back and picked him up. But that was one of my introductions to Dick. So one day, uh, he calls me on the phone. He says, uh, Gray. I said, what? He says, uh, I got a problem. What is it, Dick? He says, uh, somebody's stealing the chickens out of our chicken coop, and uh, I want to catch them tonight. Are you for it? Bring your shotgun. <laughs> I said, uh, what? He says, bring your shotgun. He says, this could be dangerous. Now, he had to know Dick to understand his character. He was a character. This could be dangerous. He says, OK, he says, I'll bring my shotgun. He says, bring, bring a box of shells. Okay, Dick. I'll be down to pick you up. So he had this big green Buick. So he comes down, he picks us up. And, I, and then he says, we got to pick up a couple, a couple other guys. <coughs> so we go over and we get, um, uh, Walt Erdman was one of them, and I, I can't remember the other one. I think it might have been Floyd Miller. Anyway, the four of us in the Buick, and it's dark. And we're going down the back road. The old, it's still a dirt road behind uh, Kramer's house. They lived on East River and a lot of rain all the way through, and the chicken coop was about halfway in between. 
So uh, we got all got for the chicken thief. Okay, so we go and we'll, so we we'll park down the road about a quarter of a mile away from the driveway that goes into the chicken coop. And if anybody comes up, that'll be our guy. Okay, Dick. So, <laughs> and all of a sudden, we're sitting there, and the car goes by us real slow, and the lights out. Here he is. This is the chicken guy. This is our chicken thief. You got your guns loaded, boys? Yeah. He says, get ready. <laughs> so the guy pulls over to the side of the road, and we pull up behind him with our lights out. And uh, four of us get out of the car, and we surround this car with four guys with shotguns. <laughs> this guy, he looks at he rolls down the window, and he looks at it. What is this, a holdup? <laughs> We're after a chicken thief. You've been stealing my chickens. Oh, oh, oh no, I haven't. So this guy's got his girlfriend over here next to him. <laughs> and, his hands, and his hands are shaking like that. Oh, oh, oh no. He said, We're not doing anything at all. He says, uh, I, I'm going to go right home. <laughs> so Kramer says, well, don't ever come back here again because you look like a chicken thief. <laughs> and the guy takes off. When he takes off, it was a guy we knew. <laughs> he was a couple of grades older than we were. But we knew the guy, and we started laughing so hard. <laughs> he didn't recognize any of us at night. In the dark with shotguns. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was Pete Day. Oh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Mary Elsterberry. Oh, oh, okay. He never Mary Elsterberry and Pete Day. Yeah. Oh. She, no, she went to the militia. No, I hate to say it was another girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Somebody else. Oh, Pete Day. Amy. Was that um, Stout? Hey, Gray, was that Stout? No. Park Lane. Oh. Where, you know, oh, where it's still down. dirt road? Yeah, way down. Yeah. 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 Right there. Oh, I go okay. yeah. wait a Yeah, Porter. still gravel. Yeah, yeah, I know where it is. Yeah. Tanner Point, we used to do the same thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Whose All house right. is it now? Who lives in there? I don't know who lives in there now. Oh, you talk about it. Kramer's old house, yeah. It was torn down. No, it's still there. It's it's uh, the house with the, the boathouse out in front of it that's sitting on land now. Two story boathouse. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Old fashioned frame, two story board house. No. Next door to it? No. No. It's right. still there, Bill. It hasn't what changed. What is a chicken coop? <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, the board house. Oh, I don't know about the board house. All right, I hesitate to ask yeah, Amy. That. I hesitate to ask Amy her story of her friends because there might be guns involved. <laughs> no, there wasn't guns, but there was, um, well, a fake party. Um, it's actually um, my sister, and my, my parents will know this story, that um, my sister and I were, were very close, um, still are, and I was in eighth grade at the time. My sister was in high school working on a project for her psychology class about the negative effects of drugs and alcohol on the teenage mind. And so they staged this scene um, in our living room. It was probably six o'clock on a Wednesday night. Um, my parents were upstairs and I was, you know, in this video that they created. And um, they had strobe lights flashing. There was loud music. They were pretending to be um, making bad decisions. And we hear a knock on the door. And so, you know, we, we shut off all the lights and we go to see who's at the door. And there's two seniors knocking on the door saying, hey, we heard this is where the party is. <laughs> and so my sister is just, just flabbergasted. She's like, excuse me? It's six o'clock on Wednesday. And she can see that they have two cases of beer behind their back. <laughs> and they said, well, we heard that this is where the party is at. There's cars in the driveway. And my sister's like, um, no, we're just, we're just filming a video for psychology class. It's our paper that's due tomorrow. 
My parents are upstairs. You want to meet them? They got out of there so fast. <laughs> oh, gosh. I remember hearing uh, tires peeling out for the first time that day um, in our driveway. Um, but um, that was probably the funniest Did moment. they drop the beer? They did. I was going to say this. They did. You would think that yeah, as fast as they ran, they would have dropped a can, but they did not. All right, Mr. Butler, your turn. Friends, <laughs> what you this did. Is, uh, I grew up with two guys, uh, Tom Weber and Mike Carter. Uh, the Carters uh, still live on the island, although their home is now for sale. Uh, that was very surprising. Uh, and we did a variety of things together, uh, TPing Mr. Bennett's house and covering Fred Appleyard's front yard with... Uh, for sale signs or driveway reflectors and uh, various and sundry nefarious things. I don't remember if it was the year we graduated. It might have even been the year after we graduated. You all know The Rock. The Rock. You might note now that The Rock is set in concrete. It wasn't always set in concrete. <laughs> no, 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 wait, now there's no evidence or proof to that effect. I'm just saying that one morning after, well, probably just like the guys that showed up at your party, uh, there wasn't a party, the rock went missing. Uh, they found it in the river right at the end of where it is now, but it went missing and people blamed the Carters for that, the Carter boys. And, uh, there were threats against them and threats against their dogs, and but we knew Dad Carter owned a gun and the dogs, one of them was half wolf, so no one was really, they were not too <laughs> concerned about that. Uh, but the reason I, I think about that one now is they, uh, it seemed, and then again, there's no proof that I had any involvement at all, okay? This was the Carter's gig, okay? But now as a teacher in the high school, I've, uh, I'm on my 10th mailbox, and I, I've even had a big old steel plate one that uh, things just don't change. It's just, you know, the more they change, the more they stay the same. See, now I'm depressed, so let's, <laughs> let's move on to happier things. All right. The people you uh, you hung out with, the things you did, some of them I'm hoping were safe and wholesome. And, you know, I, Tell us about the other stuff. Anything dangerous? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I had a couple of fun more about Dick Kramer. <laughs> Can, can I say one of those first? Of course. And it was a, a love affair. All right. Susan Jewell and Dick Kramer were very much in love during the high school. Yes. And uh, old Herman, who had the machine shop, owned it, whoever was running it for him, was sort of a high binder and he uh, didn't bankrupt. And uh, uh, pretty soon Susan's father forbid him, forbid her to going out with him because he was never going to amount to anything. So let me tell you what happened to Dick. He got out of high school, never went to college, went to work for Dun and Bradstreet, went to work for Hubbard Associates downtown, became a multi-millionaire in the industrial real estate business. Wow. Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Jewell was very wrong. <laughs> 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 but anyways, uh, what was the subject? Yeah. <laughs> your, uh, uh, not, not your Dangerous. best friend, your best friend, but the people that you hung out with and things you did, and if they're dangerous, that, that's better. For the stories. We used to shoot at each other. You used to shoot at <laughs> each other? I took out the tower. Uh, that's how you lost your hair, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can remember going down West River Road 
in passing, uh, who used to beat that guy that had a mile eight? Uh, the big fat guy. Did he live on Squam Island? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't think of his name, but he, was, for, he, he, he went to work for Sears. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> that guy. Uh, <laughs> that guy, he was heavy. Somebody shot at us, 22. Mm -hmm. Somebody shot at us. And uh, I was riding with somebody. I had my 22 with me. And I stuck, <laughs> half, I, just I, I, I stuck half my body out the window, and he was going the opposite <clears throat> direction. And I, I'll get a tire. Okay, I was pretty good shot, but we hit a bump or something. <laughs> the next day he comes to school, said, you shot my rear fender. <laughs> you <laughs> got a 22 <laughs> hole in it. That was the most dangerous thing I can think of. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a little dangerous, yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, oh, Icky Bear, Dicky Blair. Oh, oh Dicky Blair, yeah. Dicky oh, Blair. Yeah, that's good. Uh, was it Hickory Circle? Where Pam Fucci lives now? Yeah, mm -hmm. Hickory yeah. Circle. Okay, only house there. Okay. Uh, was up on a hill. Uh, it was pretty wild. The, the uh, Whitbull's house was on the uh, other side of the canal, right, right across from it. Uh, the house is still there. It's a beautiful house. got a, a red uh, wooden roof on it. Uh, wow. And, uh, okay, the, the uh, three Whitbull boys were all hunters. We're all hunters. <laughs> and uh, between Icky Bear... And Bud Whitbull, Bill Whitbull, and Bob Whitbull, they were always shooting at each other across the canal. <laughs> always. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to hit him. He's trying to hit something around him. You know? okay. <laughs> Say, yeah, stop doing smart. that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I, understand, I understand that uh, you had a story for us about, uh, about the tower. Oh. Okay, Dick Kramer. <laughs> Again? Oh, yeah. uh, somebody painted uh, 1946 on the water tower. That, you know where the, the fireman's uh, clubhouse is yeah. on the south side? Uh, on uh, uh, right off of McCoon Street. Lane. On Park Lane and McCoon yeah, Street. Yeah, mm -hmm. there was a water tower there. Mm -hmm. Pretty good size, pretty high. Somebody painted 1946. Okay, the boys in 1946, Don Baldwin called us all down to the office. And uh, he had a pretty good size office with a big desk about the size of this. And we're all sitting around like you're, like you are sitting. Okay, you guys, who painted the water tower? <laughs> Do you? No. No. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Dick Kramer giggled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> And I were the only ones that knew who painted the water tower. Did you do it, Kramer? No. Did you do it, I? No, sir. Okay, the rest of you guys get out of here. We're sitting there. And uh, you guys didn't paint the water tower. Who in the class of 46 did? Any of the boys? No. The girls. <laughs> Pat Devaney, oh God, I don't remember who was in the cl class. So, uh, the whole bunch of them. Kenny Gamble. Climbed the, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, climbed the water tower and painted the water tower in 46. <laughs> Which Dick had to giggle. <laughs> All right. Hey, I got something. Go ask, ahead. Uh, ask Craig to tell a story about the night you and McGee and Pete Devaney brought the tower into the school. Oh, oh, oh. oh wait a minute, now, wait a minute. <laughs> I wasn't in on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 said you were. I do understand that this is the, the greatest senior prank ever played. Yes. I wasn't in on it. You know, I remember hearing about a couple it. Classes, a couple of classes ahead of me, but the story was pretty bad about the cow in the office. Yeah, yeah that was Bill Shaner. That, that was bad. Cow. That was, told that, was, that was group. Peggy, Peggy's, uh, more Peggy's group. Well, yeah, because I can remember walking in that morning in this awful mess and poor Grandpa Barry trying to clean it up. <laughs> so I was still in high school. Yeah. <laughs> that was the year class. No, no. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> six and seven. 
For those uh, for those of you who don't know the story of the uh, the colony office, uh, Gray, do you want to do the honors? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the truth. All I know is what I've heard. You know, I can't admit anything. <laughs> 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 but uh, evidently, uh, for some reason, somebody in Peg's class decided that uh, they wanted to. Uh, I, I, I think it was close to Peg's class. They decided they wanted to put the cow in, the, in uh, Mr. Ball. I think it was Mr. Ball. No, no, who Mr. was it? Kruger. Yeah, Mr. Kruger. That was before Dutch me, Kruger. way before my time, Peg. <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, somehow they got this cow out of the field next door to the school, and they, yeah. they waltzed the cow into the office and uh, left them there overnight. So. <laughs> Oh, in the, in the morning, it was a pretty bad sight. And, <laughs> and smell, too. I guess Peg saw it, so she can tell me what she saw, <laughs> if she'll admit it. Well, it was just when she say a mess, because I took the early bus, and then it was terrible. Yeah. That's yeah, they put a terrible it. thing to do. And then <laughs> I think one of the Barrett's boys had something to do with it. Who? Barrett, John and John. Uh, probably. Sure. Hey, I got so another lunch room story. Yeah. Uh, for those of you, the uh, the colony office is uh, still set as a standard for senior pranks that nothing will ever top yes. the colony yes. office. Thank please. goodness. No, I, I'm, I'm just saying that it still stands as a, as a standard on Gross Seal as the, the greatest senior prank ever. That is. Oh, just to they let you know. seniors. They were not seniors. They were like 10th grade. The way that I remember the story. Well, Pete, Pete, Pete was the youngest guy in the deal. I think he instigated it. <laughs> <laughs> cafeteria story. <laughs> well, uh, the cafeteria was in the basement of the 1911 building, yeah. and of course in the our basement? high school. Yeah, in our high school was the. Uh, I remember the that basement. 28 building. Yes, it was. The and uh, you go across the between the two buildings, the front door to the side door, and uh, this is Bramer, Lillian Bramer's mother, Vivian. Bramer Lee, Thank you Bramer. called her. Uh, I guess she was a good cook. She had made good mashed potatoes <laughs> and, and gravy, but the hot dogs had veins. Ooh. So a lot of us, uh, a, lot, a lot of us went down to, to Brown's Pharmacy on Macomb Street, where the where the uh, Chinese restaurant is now, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to call him Doc Brown. Uh, he was a good guy. And uh, we'd take our lunch with him and with us and, and uh, buy a uh, soda or something and, and uh, spend, I don't know if we had an hour or 45 minutes or what we had. Probably an hour. I, I don't remember. But anyways, uh, I had a 1940 Plymouth uh, business coupe. Mm -hmm. Had a huge trunk because the business people needed a lot of storage in their trunk. <laughs> well, there was one of our classmates named Bob Taylor. Where'd the lady go that was sitting right there? A relative of hers. Uh, She's coming out of the kitchen. Yeah. And, uh, Bob Taylor and I used to like to shoot dice, shoot craps. And the trunk was just ideal during lunch hour. Guns, <laughs> craps. <laughs> and and uh, if we were late, somebody would say, where's Taylor and Heinrich? Oh, they're in the trunk. <laughs> Park, parked out in the parking lot in the trunk shooting dice. Nice. <laughs> All right. In a final story for each of you, let's let's go back to the school itself. I mean, some of the schools that we remember, they're, they, they're not there anymore. But if you can think of one place that was your favorite place, it could be a room, it could be a teacher's room, it could be your locker, it could be whatever it is. If you think of the high school, the place where you felt the safest, the best, your favorite thing, place about the high school, what would it be, Amy? It would probably be the band room. Um, I was in marching band all four years, symphony band all four years of high school. Um, I did theater for three years of high school. Um, <coughs> I remember I learned how to play euchre in the band room. Um, I, you know, it was our meeting place. It was such a place of a gathering of camaraderie and um, establishing.
establishing friendships like no other. Um, and seeing, especially now, how far the band program has come since I started uh, my freshman year, we had 40 people in the marching band. When I graduated, we had 80. We doubled in size. Um, it's probably the room that I remember most, um, probably because I spent most of my time there. Okay. Charlie? The high school. The high school. Uh, you know, I spent so much time in the gym playing basketball and in the, the auditorium in the high school. But uh, when I was going through school, the uh, seventh or the ninth grade was not at the high school. It was at the junior high, or the junior high school. And uh, the place that, when you talk about that particular building, the, the one place that I have the funnest memories of was the uh, fire escape shoot coming out of the 1911 right. building. Uh -huh. Because when you had, uh, they'd have carnival in that in the old building, uh, and as a little 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 kid uh, climbing up and down, I remember one year they had the end boarded up and so you had to climb up on the outside. Uh, I remember as a ninth grader, I was not in the play, but they did uh, uh, Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and. I went to pick up Mike Carter, who was in the play, and we went off to the uh, the spire shoot, and didn't think about it being boarded up, going down it. And <laughs> Kenny went down, boom. <laughs> so I'm coming. No. <laughs> so that was, and, and all of you. You can you just you've got that picture of the this because you don't have fire escapes like that anymore. Uh, so when I talk about the funnest single little spot of the high school, my years in high school, if I get to count my ninth grade, it'd have to be that fire shoot. <laughs> How did he get out? Climb back up. This, <laughs> he had to come back up the other way and <laughs> climb out the other way and realize this was kind of a this was not going to be as much fun as we thought it would be. So we just. He had to go back to rehearsal, and I went back home. And <laughs> that wasn't as fun, though. When I was a little kid, it was a lot of fun. It just, it just didn't end. That little place didn't end as fun as it started out for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dale. In in your school time, what what is that one place that uh, you have the best memories? Of? Well, I th I thought it was the gymnasium. Because, you know, you got all of the uh, classes together in the gymnasium. It was a good cross-section of people. And uh, at that time, we used to play a little game called, uh, occasionally, you know, when they, whenever you know, it was announced that we were going to play this, it was called Slaughter Ball. Mm -hmm. you know? Slaughter. <laughs> and uh, that meant that I could get back at Dal Kelsey for all the things that he said to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not, not knowing that he had a stronger arm than I did at that time, <laughs> but uh, it was it was just a great place to intermingle with other classmates and have fun and uh, involve and yourself in sports. Ball. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was called slaughter ball, right? Yeah, I mean, yes, I, I, right? Absolutely. It was announced you're gonna play slaughter ball. Hey, everybody. <laughs> In the high yeah. school, now, the high school that you went to, describe it. Well, it was, um, it was the old 9-11 uh, building. And uh, at that time, uh, one of my favorite things to do was the same as Fizzle, was shoot down that fire escape. But I never did get caught with the door closed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, after I, I, I think more about it, I think of, uh, I was into uh, sports quite a bit. And I think my favorite room in the whole school was down in the basement in the gym. And we had uh, showers down there and everybody had lockers. And after you played uh, basketball or football or anything, we'd all end up down in there. And we'd have great conversations with uh, our coach at the time, who was uh, Bob Smith. Well, he, his main <laughs> job was to try to keep us out of trouble. <laughs> and he tried to he tried to put a decent football team on the on the gridiron out there too. 
But uh, we had a lot of good times down there, and uh, he had to straighten us out more than once down there. And I can remember a lot of conversations with uh, Bob Smith, who eventually became a superintendent. And uh, he, he, he was um, probably the best uh, uh, mentor or teacher that I ever ran into in high school was uh, Mr. Smith. And uh, he was just a wonderful person. And I think he helped a lot of kids in that high school over the years. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, there should be uh, a lot of respect for that man because he was a really good individual at the right time for people. What else, Coach? Bill, I, I leave the, the last for you when it comes to the school because I know that the 1911 building was so... Say it again. I know the 1911 <laughs> building was near and dear to your heart. So when I talk about your favorite part about the building, I'd like to like to know what what was your favorite part, your favorite spot of uh, the 1911 building. The high school plays. I was stage manager for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, might have been all four years. I don't know. But uh, uh, putting all that stuff together, all those all those uh, what do you call them? The panels. Props. Panels, panels of scenery. Glass sets. The what? Sets. Flats. Sets. Flats, but yeah. the Flats. panels of scenery, and we kept Flats them all in, up, up on the on the sides of each side of the uh, the 1911 building stage. In the uh, the electrical switchboard was quite old, and keeping that going with the dimmers and, and everything, the old fashioned dimmers, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I had a good time doing that for a lot of years, and, and uh, it got me out of class quite often. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, okay, I, I printed all the tickets too in the in the uh, in the print shop in the high school. But uh, I'm thinking of another funny story about the 1911 building in the stage. Uh, we were having a dance, and. Uh, Gray mentioned Heine Krebs. Uh, he, he was uh, he was a screwball, and he started drinking awful young. He must start drinking when he was a, a uh, junior or something. <laughs> and uh, he'd come to the dances, and he never had a girlfriend because he uh, he wasn't too handsome, <laughs> uh, and uh, he was sort of outspoken. But anyways, uh, he'd be drinking. And uh, the rest of the guys would look after him because uh, he was a nice guy. He was just sort of crazy. <laughs> and, uh, nice, crazy uh, crap. <clears throat> all of a sudden, okay. somebody said, what happened to Heine? God, I don't know. Somebody said they saw him going behind stage. Oh, God. I'll go find him. It's, it's my territory. I remember this <laughs> now. <laughs> I go back in behind stage. Heine, where are you? a catwalk way up high, two stories high. He liked high places. <laughs> Nobody knew how to get him down. <laughs> Heidi, come on down before you fall down. He would not come down. And I don't remember, I, I suppose it was somebody else and I had to climb up on that catwalk and, and hold him by the hand or whatever and, and get him over the ladder <laughs> and bring him down. I remember God. that time, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, he disappeared. That, he, he joined the Navy and disappeared. He speaking never, of that, he never came back. Oops, excuse me. Speaking of that room, I, I spent a lot of time down there with your father. <coughs> yeah, he got straightened out by uh, Mr. Smith too occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Nice turnaround. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was a great athlete though. Well, Louis, that's what Louis. I understand. Sure was. All right. In summary, you think of all the time that our high school has, and you know, starting from a, uh, the, the 1911 building up to the modern school that ju we just had renovated, and the, the beautiful technology, and uh, it, it really is a beautiful school for those of you who have gone into it now. Um, you all have memories, you, but it, all these stories revolve around the people. 
the people that were there with us, the people who shared in the times. And uh, uh, I like hearing those stories uh, about um, you know, your best friend or the people you hung out with and the things that you did. Um, so as a final, final end of the day, what do you miss most about high school? Start again with you, Amy. What do you miss most about high school? That's a good question. Um, I miss some of the teachers. Um, when I think back about the teachers that I had and being a teacher myself, um, we we have we still have some of the good ones. Um, I you, remember. You can say their names. I know, right? <laughs> I'll dish. Um, I. I'm a big fan of how far the music program has come um, with Nate Berenger being the director, um, Mr. Lozell, I remember um, from one of my first experiences in high school, he introduced himself to me and opened up a world of literature that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, I remember this guy and thinking about being a lawyer in all seriousness. Um, in high school thinking about what I wanted to do with the rest of my life and and being a little bit overwhelmed and I remember asking you about being a lawyer and and if it was worth it and then I remembered that you came back to Girls Hill High School to be a teacher and that said volumes about you and about the profession um believe it or not right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not um, my fault okay <laughs> Um, but really, it's, a lot of it is the teachers for me, um, and how, and the impression that they make from what you guys have said about Mr. Smith and what a great guy he was, and, and the teachers that I remember, um, from when I was in high school, that bar is set really high, and it seems to have stayed there all this time. I would agree. Gross Hill, fine, fine faculty, fine, fine. Mr. Butler. What do you miss most? You know, there's not, I, I don't miss. I'm, I'm still, because I get to still go through it. And, and you talk about Bob Smith. He was a superintendent when I was there with uh, Vince Pizzamenti. And yeah. you talk about the teachers, Gene Allred and Jim Bennett and uh, Ann Sheedner. And I'm looking now at the future. And I'm seeing these kids, some of them are great. Some of them are up. Uh, Pain in the butt, just like Mr. Krebs, okay? They're, I am very, very, very blessed to have, to get to hear the stories, to have lived through lots of them, and now I'm watching these new kids go, and I swear to God, they're going to carry me out of there feet first. So, when you ask what I miss, I, I'll tell you what I miss, I'm... I'm going to miss being, uh, every day that I miss going back there, I miss that day. And so I, I hate summer. I hate three months out of my classroom? No way. So when you want it, what I miss, I miss it when I don't get to be back in there. But I know that the next time I do, it'll be just as good as the last time. Dale, what, what do you miss most about, the, about your time in school? Well, I think uh, to sum it up, I'd say the innocence of youth. You know, in that era, it, it was a very innocent era. Nineteen sixty-three. Yeah, they were right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it was, it was Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. Leave It to Beaver was one of the big programs on television. But truly, uh, it was uh, an interesting time. I know that we didn't have the exposure early on to so many of the things that the youth of today are exposed to, and it. I think it made a difference in our lives because uh, our discovery process was very slow and elongated. And uh, I think that uh, we were different people uh, for that reason. Uh, you know, we, we, we approached discovery very carefully and uh, we didn't instantaneously attach ourselves or experiment in things that we shouldn't have. We might have eased ourselves into it. For example, alcohol. The worst thing that could happen when I was in high school was to get caught smoking a cigarette, particularly if it was on school grounds. I mean, that was just terrible. I mean, you'd be sent home for that. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, and, there was a dr- and there was a dress code. You know, you wore, you wore a, a, a formal shirt and uh, dress trousers. And I can remember a, a girl being sent home because she wore what were called uh, uh, culottes at that time. And it was, it was a skirt. I mean, to look at it, you'd think it was a skirt. But it wasn't a skirt skirt, so she was sent home. And uh, there, there were very strict guidelines, and, and they had to be adhered to. So uh, I, th- I think, in general, uh, we, we were better people for that. I really do. Not that they're not good now. It's just that <laughs> there's a different time. Different times. <laughs> All right. Great. What do you miss most of, uh, about school? Um, um, I miss um, the sports <laughs> because I was into uh, sports and into everything as far as sports were concerned. And uh, I miss all the good friends that I made back in those days. And, uh, and most of the, the good friends out of that class, is, but most of them are gone, except I still had this guy here. So we see each other every once in a while, but he's kind of like an old an old barn, you know, he just doesn't move too much. Making oh. a, a, a chicken coop, yeah. <laughs> chicken coop. So I know I can always find him if I have to. Oh, all right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, back in those days, I think that sports probably got me through high school because I didn't look forward to going into the, uh, uh, arithmetic. And I, but I looked forward to going and play baseball or football or basketball, depending on what it was at the time. But uh, that's probably what I missed the most from the old school. All right, Bill, for the last word of the evening, what do you miss most about high school? You know, I've had an awful good time. Damn sure. Uh, I miss the girls. There's still a couple of them live in Trenton. They're old, old girls. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to emphasize the best part of my life has been 56 years married to my wife. Uh, But we had an awful good time on this island for 83 years. I have to stop and think. Almost 84. And uh, it was a great place to grow up. And Rosio is matured very, very nicely. Dewey Henry class of 46, died a couple years ago. Uh, did an awful lot towards that. He was chairman of the planning commission and then township supervisor. And he got us on the right track of planning in Grosse Hill, class of 46. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, are there any questions from the audience before we uh, close the panel? Any Anyone would like to? Uh, a question for any of our illustrious guests? Uh, one. Go right ahead, Wayne. Uh, directed more to Gary and Bill. And I know you were younger. You were probably in your uh, middle school or junior high school years. Do you recall how you felt or how you, do you remember when you first heard about the Japanese bombing of Pearl Harbor? Say it again. The bombing of Pearl, Pearl Harbor. Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Do you oh, remember yeah. when, that, when you were informed about it, and how did you feel about yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, we were down at a girlfriend's house. <laughs> uh, Again? On uh, either lake or, or island. What's not island? Island. Oh. Uh, Rucker. Uh, down on lake or Rucker. Yeah, it's on uh, no. lake. Uh, in. Uh, Sitting around, the sitting around listening to the radio and, and uh, God, Pearl Harbor's been bombed. We were sort of uh, critical uh, and I still am critical of the Japanese but we were vehemently critical if that's a right <coughs> word uh, uh, for those days. And uh, we listened to the radio a lot. Yeah. 
to get the news. Remember what time of the day it was at that time? I don't remember. Later in the evening? I don't, don't remember. Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. Well, it had to be. I mean, the time yeah. was different. Yeah, in the middle of, the, middle of the afternoon was it? Okay. Yeah. I was and, uh, you know, the, I think the, one of the things that um, you kind of for, you, you forget, but uh, that war was a drag on everybody everywhere. Everybody was affected mainly by that war. And uh, we've had some nasty wars since then, but that was a total war. And at that time, um, you didn't know if you were going to be bombed out of your house or not in those days. You really, that was in the back of your mind. Yeah. Because they were bombing at the time, they were bombing London, and they were being, uh, the English were getting bombed out of existence. And uh, Hitler at that time was a major threat, and the Japanese were the same thing. And uh, so, and we, and you lost friends all, all along the way. Good people, uh, good friends of mine were killed. And uh, so it was a very serious thing and I think it had a big impact on my life and uh, it's probably stayed with me all my life I uh, remembering that war because it was, it was a major, real, out and out war. It wasn't a skirmish like some of these wars we're into right now. This was a major event. And uh, people had serious thoughts about submarines out there in Lake Erie. Every once in a while, it'd be a rumor: huh? submarines out and seen out in the lake. <laughs> and uh, it, we had blackouts. You couldn't leave your lights on at night for quite a while. You had to make sure all your shades were pulled down, and no light was getting out. And we had uh, wardens that would go around and see to that in those days. My uh, brother-in-law was a warden at the time and uh, he was out on his bike doing his job and he got hit by a car that night and broke his leg and had to go to Wynette Hospital. But uh, it was a major, major war and we felt it even more because we had, we were training half of the pilots were in that war right here in Grosell. Uh, those pilots were trained right here and we had them buzzing around every day, buzzing, buzzing around. These little yellow airplanes going around and around. You got so used to them every once in a while, somebody going to drink. And uh, most of them got out, though, because they're just little yellow uh, paraplanes. And, uh, but uh, it was a serious, serious uh, thing. And uh, the people that are in that war uh, uh, should really be admired. And of course, all the young people that are in wars that we're in now should be admired and backed by the citizens of this country 100%. And we should see to it that those people, when they come home and wounded, we should find out and make damn sure they're being taken care of the way they should be. That's our responsibility as uh, citizens and uh, voters. What's more important, <laughs> what's just as important is to elect officials that will not send us to war. There's ways to keep out of wars. Uh, and uh, Eisenhower knew how to do it. He ended the Korean War. That was my war. Uh, and uh, uh, it can be done. But getting back to the, to the school, uh, <laughs> you, can, you can just imagine all those guys in that high school that uh, they were going into service and they might not come back. And uh, uh, they were men. They were not boys. All right, any other uh, questions from uh, from the crowd? Comments? Please, feel free. Um, I'm just wondering if anybody ever had a teacher in, in uh, maybe, maybe in the 60s, uh, Helen Drake. Did anyone have Helen Drake as a teacher? I remember her. Fifth yeah. grade. Yeah. Helen yeah. Drake? She was my yeah. fifth grade teacher. Yeah. 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 Helen Drake. Yeah. I knew the Drakes that grew in their, their old sure family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Gwen was a year ahead of right. me. Right. I'm just curious if she was a teacher. She was a good teacher, I think. Sure. Good. Ms. Walters was a great teacher. I'm sorry? 
All right, how many of you who are here tonight are graduates of uh, Gross Hill High School? All right. So next time we have uh, one of these tractor barrels, <laughs> there, uh, thank you. I'd like there you, you go. To, to, to <laughs> step up I'm and sorry, I, I sh- my hand down. Oh, oh, and come and share your memories. Uh, we uh, we greatly appreciate the time, the effort, and uh, the remembrances that you gave us here tonight. Uh, again, I know that uh, sometimes it's not all fun and games, and it's not all all good stories. They're embarrassing things. They're sad things from the past. But uh, we thank you for sharing them with us. And thank you all for coming tonight.